welcome to this month's edition of the Chemical of the Month. Uh, as we've been teaching around the country, people ask us to use an example of something that's explosive. Hey, can you do a Chemical of the Month on something that's explosive? So we did a little research and found a nasty explosive chemical, and this one is called diazomethane. Diazomethane. So get your books and your charts, and we're going to practice using it. I want to show you, before we get into that, I want to show you just a little bit of time-sequenced uh, events that led up to an explosion of just in a lab. It wasn't a big deal, but it shows you how explosive this is. So take a look at this. Right, so there's a little vial there with diazomethane in it, which is a gas. They put that little match above it. You can see that all of a sudden the container gets white, glowing white hot, and then it just blows up and you'll see sparks coming out of it. So that's diazomethane. But since we have never ran that before, we need to use the system. Yeah. So step one of diazomethane is, is it above the line or below the line? To go to chart number two. You go to chart two, you look at the, for, under the D's for diazo, is diazo there? No, it's not. Remember so that? Then, yeah, that's first name, right? So first easy. Name. It's either yes or no, and that was a no, so it's above, above the, line. the line. And so, guys, for the chemistry geeks out there, above the line, it's not that it's cute or this is novel or it's a trick. The, the, above the line means covalent. All right, below the line means ionic. Or above the line, same thing as above salts the line. Salts and non-salts. Salts and non-salts. It's just, that's that chemistry we studied at the National that Fire That never Academy. worked. Right, it's a we great class. We memorized it to take a test, and we ran a call and didn't know what the hell we right. were doing. Right, nobody, yeah, right. So all, when you run on a call, we just want you to know immediately if it's ionic or covalent. But instead of teaching you formulas, we just give you the periodic chart. If the name is there, then it's below the line because you said yes, and it means it's a salt. It's an ionic bond. If it's not there... And they all there, happen to have the same basic hazard. Right. That's the beauty of it. Right. It's almost like weather and, weather and climate. The weather in the North Pole is different based where you're at, but the climate's the same. So the climate is above the line, below the line. The weather comes up on chart three and chart four. Okay, so diazomethane is above, above the line. Above the line. So it's a gas that's heavier than air, that's toxic, that's flammable, that's a corrosive acid, there's fluorine in it, it's radioactive, it's water reactive, it polymerizes, and it's air reactive. Yeah, it's everything. Done. Done. So right now, a gas that's flammable and toxic, I'm thinking Ternacki or an SCBA. An SCBA. And since it's flammable and toxic, I better bring a flammable and toxic meter, which is my four gas. So if you look at the above, everything to the right of the bullet is a hazard. Everything to the right of the, of the arrow is a meter to measure that hazard. So within 10 seconds, I know the hazards, and I know the meters, and I know what to wear on a chemical we've never been to before. And now I have an ability to go over the air and tell everyone we're running uh, above the line. Now we go to chart three. We're going to call an audible. Let's call, we're going to call an audible. So we start up in the upper left corner for any part of diazomethane in the upper left carbon and hydrogen flammable clue box. And I see meth there. So as soon as I see yes, that tells me I need to go down versus going to the right. So then I see methane. So I think to myself, Chris, is that a red three? And I say, well, that's the best match I have. Yes. But, uh, but that diazo at the beginning, who, what, who knows what that means? That could be damn important, that diazo, but I don't have a clue what it means. So when will I find out what diazo means? When I get to the book and I look at hazards. Okay, so I'm calling this a red three. You could call it a red one still. No big deal, but we're going to the book now. So look up diazo methane in the book. What page is that, Chris? Page 92 on the bottom. Now, if you had a chemistry degree or you went to chemistry or you teach chemistry, I know, you know, right? don't ignore your knowledge. Bring that to the, make the chart richer. I know that diazo means this, and then I'm going to confirm it in the book. Di means what? We did it with uh, oxygen difluoride. Di means two. Two. Right? Because there's two letters. If it said tri, it would have been three. So di, two of what? Of azo. What does oh, azo, azo mean? You don't know what azo means? Right, right. You know, I don't. Yeah, that guy just ran a red light. What an azo. <laughs> uh, and so what azo <laughs> means in chemistry is nitrogen. Well, All what's right? the big deal with nitrogen, the, Chris? It, when it, be, when it, it's, it blows up. Nitrogen, nitrogen yeah. Yeah, nitrogen, TNT, nitrogen. Picric acid, nitrogen. 
Nitrogen blows up. Right? So when he knew that, that's great information, but we didn't know that. You know, so he knew that, we didn't, so we go to the book. Now, right? we, now I'm gonna go to the book, does it blow up? You guys tell me. Yeah, I mean, you got 10 seconds, does it blow up? Look underneath LEL. Flammable Explosive. gas, that. And, and it's all capitalized and in brackets. That's the author yelling at you. Hey, Azo, this blows up. And then, so, so, that, so that trumps everything now. I got a gas, is it flammable? It's got question marks. What does that mean? Question mark means, yeah. Listen, your wife walks into the room and says, hey, I think I'm pregnant. Go get a meter. Right? She's pregnant yeah, until the meter meters. says she's not. So when you hear a question mark, uh, hey, I think I'm pregnant, go get a meter. So oh. everything, a question mark means what? Yes, yes or no? Yes, yes, yes. How do you confirm it? Get a what? Get a meter. Get a meter. Yep, the appropriate meter, right? The appropriate meter. You don't meter, bring an right. LEL meter to see no. if she's pregnant. No, no. Right, you gotta have the right meter. So when you talk about, look at, check this one out. What about Flashpoint? Why does Flashpoint say an it? Ain't none. Go and look what is, look at the word that's next to ain't none, in parentheses, gas. It says it doesn't have one because it's a gas. Remember what flashpoint means. It's the temperature, point means temperature, L is the state of matter. What's, the, what's L stand for? Liquid. So that flashpoints are for liquids and solids, not for gases. So let's talk about toxicity. So let's check this out. This is a flammable gas that blows up, and look at the ideal H. Two ppm. Two parts per million. Phosgene was two parts per million. Yeah. It's as toxic as phosgene. Super toxic. Where are the vapors going? Molecular weight 42. Get me a ladder. I'm going up there where it's not. Right. 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 But this stuff blows up. If I'm on a ladder, can I get killed on the ladder? Sure. What makes this stuff blow up? Remember what to read. Note. Note means it's freaking important. Read it. It may explode violently. When? On heating. Exposure to sunlight. So if you're in Seattle, this shit's safe. But if you're here where it's sunny, we got issues. On contact with rough edges, such as ground glass. Now that's how <laughs> sensitive this is. What about ground dirt? No. You're or, safe there. No, or right. ground beef. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is the, the part of this. You know, I start prioritizing in my brain. Which one of these can kill me? Well, flammable gas can kill me. Toxicity, I got my SEVA on, so that's not going to kill me. But if this stuff hits a rough edge or sunlight, it can blow up and kill me. Do we have any PPE to protect us from something blowing up? No. Please? So if I got a leaking cylinder of this inside, well, let's put it outside. Outside in the sunlight. What are you doing? I'm Red light or green light? I'm letting that thing just release. Yeah, into what's the it, it's either going to empty out yeah. or blow up. Or and blow if it up. blows up, I want to be as far away as possible on this chemical. But what if we had a small leak, Chris? Somebody says, I think that cylinder's leaking. That's no. a hell of a call. Yeah, it's a hell of a call. Who wants that mission? Go no. up there with your PID to see if it's leaking. Right? Let's look what the IP is. The IP is, what, nine? Nine. So the PID would work. You just need some dude who's going to walk up there with the meter. I don't want that job. Because mm -mm. it fits in the sunlight. Great question would be, what would be the concentration that it needed to be to blow up? Above 2 ppm's, because ideal H is 2 ppm's. Maybe it's an ideal H for blowing up. It blows up yeah, at 3. Yeah, sometimes you can look at the ideal H <laughs> it blows and up it at says, three. yeah, this is a dangerous level. So anyway, that's a tough, look at musty odor. Mm -hmm. Yellow gas with musty odor. Hmm. So, PPE on this one? Turnout gear. Uh, what are you wearing for, for foot attire? I had Nike, Nike running Nike shoes. Nike running shoes. The lighter the shoes, the faster you can run even when you're old like us. So this one, um, it's, a, it's flammable, so I'm wearing turnout gear. I've got to wear my mask because the IDLH is two parts per million. If it's leaking, I'm staying away from this. This is an evacuation. How far? Well, again, we're talking about you need th you know, three things you need to know when you're just sizing up or, or responding to a chemical. Product, so the product is diazo, diazomethane. Container, well, does it change if it's a rail car versus a little cylinder this big? Heck yes, and then environment. Is it inside, is it outside, is it Seattle, is it Miami? So it, it depends on the product, container, environment. But this chemical can blow up in the air, so I'm staying away. If it's a line of sight rescue, you say your prayers, quick, quick in, in quick, out. quick out. But at least if you let it go, Joe, and you let it release into the atmosphere, you can answer to the press. You know, the committee wants to know, why in the world did you do this? 
And right. the reason you have this, to have a reason. Right, right? and you could give them a reason. It blows yeah, but this up one's heavier than there. So if you had a big container, that's going to accumulate where people are, and then you might have an explosion because of sunlight. This is a bad, bad chemical right here. This is a tough one. Yeah. yeah. But, but again, I'm surely not wearing plastic. That's so. one of the call ins. If you had a time machine, I'm going to call in sick today. Right, right. Drive slow. Drive slowly where you get there first. Yeah, yeah. So that's this month's chemical of the month. We wanted to do an explosive. This is about a, as an explosive as you can get. Explosive gas. Because, yeah, you yeah. don't normally have explosive gases. And you don't normally have it that it's sunlight that makes something blow up. So probably not too many commercial uses for this, I'm thinking. There's no UN number. So it's, yeah, it's probably not shipped, doesn't have a UN number. So anyway, that's this month's chemical of the month. This I'm Joe. I'm Chris. We're signing off. Stay safe forever. Mm -hmm.